we have with us Ms. Neeta Bhalla, ma'am. She has 22 years of experience in the field of education. She's an educationist by profession and a writer by choice. MA in three subjects, nutrition, English, and education. Currently, she is the Vice Principal at Vipcure Group of Schools, Lucknow. Ma'am, it is a pleasure to have you with us here and it would be great if you can tell us a bit more about yourself and your journey as an educator. It's always had been a pleasure being in this education field because uh, we become a learner throughout our lives. It is not only that we are teaching, we are learning every day with the students. Yes, I had uh, experience as a primary teacher and then slowly gradual, uh, I should say, progressing towards uh, career growth as a coordinator and then finally as a vice principal, waiting more to come. Uh, I have learned a lot coming from a traditional background of teaching and changing the entire setup by this uh, uh, experiential learning, you may say, or then coming I don't know, I should say thanks to this pandemic situation that we had been digitalized so much and we have becoming so computer literate. And every day is a new learning because every single day we try to find out a new way to do the corrections or maybe a fishbowl activity, maybe a timer or maybe a quiz, conducting a lot of quizzes. Every day is a new learning experience and we keep on exploring. So this is how uh, we had learned a lot because we had been a part of a traditional teaching background and now accepting this change. It was a wonderful learning experience throughout. We have with us Ms. Nikhat Jagri as a ma'am, principal at Billabong High International School, Mumbai. She is the recipient of Education Leadership Award by World Education Congress with Master's Degree in Education. She has more than 35 years of experience in leading schools. Her experiences, skills, competencies, passion and commitments to continuously improve the educational system makes her a great fit for the entire educational institution background. Ma'am, it would be great if you can tell us a bit more about your journey. My journey as an educator actually started with me having graduated uh, from Mumbai University and majored in child development and that intrigued me and made me want to go ahead and pursue this as a career. So career uh, just happened. Initially, it was just a love of learning and love of being with the children that made me do this and also followed it up with a diploma in ACCA. Then I started working with preschool children and that brought a lot of love and laughter and life in my own life. I've always been a very serious and very um, introvert kind of a person but then this brought out the other side of my being with children brought out the other side of my personality and I, I myself bloomed along with the children and my journey as an educator began from there I moved up the ladder and I became the principal of that school and I've had the opportunity and I've been blessed to uh, to lead schools from the front uh, across the boards be it the national boards or international board as well and uh, before I came back to Mumbai, I was in Dubai for five years and I headed a group of schools over there. And I led the school, which also had a curriculum across the national Indian curriculum as well as the international curriculum. So why I say this is that I would like to emphasize that my learning has been immense and my learning continues. As uh, Ms. Neeta rightly said, that the pandemic has taught us a different uh, way of learning, teaching and learning process. And it's been great learning for the last two years. And the learning has, at the cost of repeating myself and sounding very repetitive, the learning continues. But it's it's a great satisfaction to see that we have had a great influence and impact on the children who are under our care. And it is nice to be remembered fondly as a great principal. It is nice to have children who were uh, slow learners with different uh, challenges in life having now bloomed into great uh, personalities you know, that's that's the most achieving and satisfying experience of my life that when i see my children who were differently abled who were struggling with their academics but they are now very well placed in their life so that is a very satisfying uh, part of my journey and i'm really grateful to the almighty for making me an educator and an influencer and i wish to continue this throughout my life 
we have with us Dr. Nidhi Ma'am, head at Mount Litra Z Schools, Ghaziabad. She is an academician who has been a part of education world for more than 25 years and has worked in the capacity of teacher, vice principal, principal, director in schools of India and abroad. She is a leader who has ignited young minds to ensure their initiate potential. I started uh, being an army officer's wife, I've traveled both India and abroad and uh, started my career in a small town from a small town in Assam and then uh, moved on uh, to become a PGT and then took over as principal. Then I was the regional school director with, uh, um, uh, with SL group, the Z group and I had headed the northern India schools and currently of course I am uh, heading uh, one of their schools in Ghaziabad. So uh, in brief as my uh, elite panelists have already shared for an academician, it's always a great satisfaction when you know when you see um, your students progress and when uh, you see them uh, appointed at higher posts and doing well. And during this journey of mine for 25 years, I've grown from a facilitator to a leader. And uh, pandemic, of course, is thought and. Since I've always been working with progressive schools primarily, so experiential learning and hands-on learning has been the uh, prime focus of teaching children uh, the nuances, different nuances of uh, education. And uh, pandemic, of course, has really taught because I always believe that there's a lot to learn. And uh, as a leader also, I. And if we look at pandemic, of course, it has uh, taught us to unlearn, learn and then again relearn. And uh, technologically, the, the educators have grown, have moved an extra mile. Uh, so pandemic, in a way, has taught us many things. Though, of course, certain gaps have also got exposed uh, of, during the pandemic times in the we, and the new NEP that has been uh, introduced, the new education policy that has been introduced. So a lot of uh, things on the skill work, on the skill building of the students is a way forward that we are looking at. So in a nutshell, this is from my side. We have with us Mr. Neeraj Sir, an IAM Indoor alumni and a mechanical engineer who created Real School in 2018 to fill in high order skill gap commonly uncommon among employable youth. He realized that process of upskilling starts at the early stage when creativity and learnability is at its peak. He was also awarded the Leaders in Innovation Award Fellowship by Royal Academy of Engineering. Uh, first of all, I'm extremely honored to be a part of uh, this panel where, uh, you know, my experience in edutech overshadows my leaps and bounds. Uh, so, so basically, my you know my experience with education or you know in the in the, in the teaching space started very early when you know uh, I had a little I had a young uh, sister. So we would always you know question. I would I would generally take out this take take on this challenge that you know uh, this is a question. Let's try solving it without looking into the book, without finding an answer, and and then see who who comes with the right answer. Like why do clouds form? So things like that got into me. I started, you know, having I started creating my own way of teaching, my way, my own way of uh, you know, pursuing a question and finding out those answers. That led to me forming a company in when I was in eighth standard. That, that was into you know teaching electronics to kids. I would get material, teach uh, electronics. I started a hobby club. So teaching was was you know very very close to me. I went on to do my engineering and all, but I had a very brief stint of uh, three point five years working with an education company where I was. Uh, instrumental in creating their hands-on activities uh, through robotics. Uh, you know, that was back in 2009, 2008, 9, 10. After doing my MBA, I, uh, you know, out of my own curiosity, I started in a company which was into industrial automation. But back again in 2018, much before the pandemic, I thought, you know, why not, uh, why not, you know, I started a company. Why? Because I had my inquisitiveness to solve problems that are all around us, but yet we can't identify them. So, you know, there has there's something which is extremely lacking among 
each one of us that we can't find problem and we can't solve them so why not you know uh, start something which would create that that empathy that design thinking among kids that you know that capability to uh, to develop their skills so that they are more suitable to solve real world challenges so let us call it real school which would which would solve real world challenges and that's how we didn't even see of of you know a pandemic coming but uh, yes we were like you know very much ready to to give that kind of experiential learning and hands on education through some of our products and i am really happy to see the progress of my students till now if you can explain all the parents out there a little about what exactly experiential learning means and when experiential learning was employed could you notice an increase in the independent thinking on the part of the students out there uh, experiential learning has a very positive effect on this young brigade especially the average or below average students and we cater to all three kind of learners when it comes to experiential learning because we have as a as a educator or as a teacher in the class i am responsible not only for a particular set of students we are responsible for the whole entire set of the students whichever category they belong to we are not able to we should not tag them but yes we know that from where we need to start and where we need to lead them uh the whole idea behind this revolutionary approach is the holistic development as well as the learning experience may be cooperative collaborative or independent learning and the wide era of the assessment strategies as observation anecdotes peer assessments and self reflection or a collaborative process of the teachers that is very important a uh, new pedagogy and the curriculum introduced in nep 2020 set a path to attain sdg goal 4.1 and its uh, developmental imperatives the parents if we see they are very happy because the parent of today if i am talking of the again the younger lot the parent who are as a age of 35 40 they have less time so they they are so dependent on schools and when the students are given a chance to invent to discover and then try their to understand themselves and reach to a conclusion makes the parent very satisfied and this is a very positive aspect of this experiential learning that it has been always welcomed by the set of parents that okay we are happy but the other part of that is parents still look for marks it is a fact that parents still look for the progression in the form of percentage and uh, it's a fact that when our school students go for the admission in universities again that is a cut off which affects a lot so uh, this approach like an entire concept of experiential learning will be unsuccessful until and unless it is mapped with the learning outcomes and achievement of the objective merely showing a video or usage of the smart board will never be effective if the reflection result is negative and of course a teacher has to be very well equipped so we have to somewhere stress on the teacher training that is very important learning by reflection learning by doing so in an experiential learning process it's uh, of course a learning by doing but then uh, it is very important that the concept clarity has to be there with the teacher who is doing because uh, the children as we say they learn by doing there have to be different rubrics that need to be very very structured about how the students uh, learning is being processed and of course how the learning outcomes are looked at so again i i also will uh, surely say that it is important that we need to have a very structured teachers training if we want experiential learning as a way forward
you have also mentioned about the same that teachers need to be equipped and everything regarding the experiential learning so how can that be done and this model uh, how how is how will it be useful for the teacher staff out there as the, this is the demand of the era this is the demand of the time that we keep on training our teachers and if we are you know laying out certain okay you have to do a uh, suppose a role play or you you had you teach your student suppose uh give a different end to a particular story or you are designing a blurb or a cover page or any kind of project which we are doing as a learning or we are learning about types of soil anything point is that if the teacher has to understand because here we are keeping the global dimensions also in mind so if my teacher is not well equipped we train our teachers with a element of soft skills of course this professional growth of teacher matters a lot whether it is attainment of the sdg or in a simple way reaching to an objective of the concept taught in the class if i wanted my child end of the chapter or end of a particular day's lesson my child should understand what is mean meaning of the definition of an adjective and i teach n number of thing but i could not teach the definition of an objective i am sorry adjective then the entire day's plan goes for a waste so the teacher has to understand that how to define the objective when she is constructing a lesson plan once she will understand that okay this is my objective definitely she will try to reach out that now that is again a teacher's creativity because experiential learning is again based on the teacher's creativity as well we can provide n number of trainings to the teacher okay you can use this you can use this you have lot many options but until unless the teacher is a learner herself or himself and he wants to explore she will not be able to achieve the adjective objective i'm so sorry so point is ki it is from the government side also whether it is cbsc or unesco or state governments they are into lot many trainings nowadays yeah but getting the train t- you are yourself trained and then you will be able to impart that ah, to your yeah. students then the objective will be met it is all about experiencing reflecting initiating and then uh, you know acting as per the thing that learning outcome is important definitely but more stress has to be on the learning process because the processes need to be very well defined and teachers need to be trained as per what are the learning processes they are utilizing for different learning approaches or because whether uh, when we talk of experiential learning david cobb's uh, experiential learning approach is here to stay and it is you know we keep on camouflaging it in different ways but at the end of the day uh, even if we look at how if we look at a small child the child who doesn't know how to talk will start because why do we say the talk to the child because then the child will start talking so it's all experiential learning ideally so if we look at the language language we always say uh, it cannot be taught it has to be caught because lsrw so these are the processes we keep the learning at the end of the day if we look at the uh, of any language the learning outcome is that the child should know how to write but somewhere the l- listening speaking and reading skills are uh, we are not looking into it so it's important that we stressed on if we look um, at what happened with india in 2009 our uh, if we look our our students are doing well they are well established uh, the google ceo is an indian but then at the end of the day we also have to understand the fact in 2009 in 2009 when the pisa uh, assessment uh, exam ha- uh, uh, results had been out india stood second from bottom and now again in 2022 uh, pisa is again niti aayog did take a way forward and the pisa assessment will be ca- conducted particularly for the ch- uh, it is being conducted in the chandigarh region and uh, see the numeracy literacy and the logical critical thinking skills 
have to be stressed on uh, through experiential learning manner uh, what we talk of but then again it is important to build on these skills of the children which somewhere um is uh, still that these areas have to be looked on into so again the main thing comes or the crux of the problem comes is that our teachers have to be trained have to be very well equipped with the learning process it's very very important